Hi, my name is Pastor Dan Mueller and I'm the pastor here at Walla Walla Lutheran Parish in New South Wales, Australia. Some of us in our parish for Lent have been reading the book Embodying Mark. And this book has been our guide as we journey with Jesus toward the cross during this season of Lent. Today, our meditation is based on chapter 5 of the book, Following the Beloved. And we'll hear the account of the transfiguration of Jesus. This account has this wonderful structure. At the start, we see Jesus and the disciples walking up a mountain, and at the end, they will descend the mountain. In the middle, we have two miracles. Jesus is transfigured before them. His clothes became, become dazzling white. And on the other side, we have another miracle. A cloud envelops the disciples and they hear a voice coming from heaven. And at the centre of the whole thing, we have the disciples who are confused, who don't know what to make of what's going on. So I invite you now to relax as we hear God's word. Relax your shoulders, sit in a comfortable position because the very creator of the universe who spoke this world into existence by word alone, he is about to speak to you as we hear from Mark chapter 9. After six days... Jesus took Peter, James and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. And there he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses who were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, And a voice came from the cloud. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. I invite you perhaps to read over this passage again. And you might like to uh, find for yourself a, a picture of a mountain. This here is a picture of um, Mount Hermon in Israel, Caesarea Philippi, the city where Jesus has just been in Mark chapter 8, is just on the southwestern slopes of Mount Hermon. So it's possible that this is the very hills that Jesus and his disciples ascended for the transfiguration. So find a picture of a mountain, any mountain will do, and Read the passage again, and as you read the words, perhaps you can imagine Jesus and the disciples walking up to the top of this mountain, and what do you see as you hear these words? Is there a phrase or a word that jumps out to you? As I was meditating on this passage, this phrase of uh, that Jesus' clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. 
this is the phrase that jumped out to me. And I was reflecting and thinking about this and trying to put myself into the shoes of, of um, the hearers of, of Mark's gospel to who he was writing. And for them, this white, dazzling white robe would have brought up all these pictures in their minds. Firstly, they would have thought of the Messiah because the Messiah was their promised king who we hear in the book of Revelation um, is the bright morning star. He has this association of, of being bright and white and dazzling. And again, in Daniel chapter 7, we, we hear about this, this Messiah who is dazzling white, who stands before the Ancient of Days. Secondly, I think they would have had this picture of a king because before a king would ride triumphant into a city, he would be robed in white and he would sit upon his horse and he would ride into the city. Probably this whole account of the transfiguration would have also evoked in them images of Moses. When Moses met with God on Mount Sinai, his face became dazzling white. So Jesus here is perhaps being shown to be the new Moses and he's leading his people on a new exodus. And lastly, I think this is perhaps a picture that Mark's first readers would have heard very clearly that we maybe don't hear as clear today. the idea of a white robe was also very much associated with a martyr, someone who was about to go and give their life for a cause that they believed in. Between the Old and the New Testaments, there's about a 400-year period, and um, we have some of the events that happened during this period, and we know about the Maccabean War, And in one of those accounts, we hear about how um, some of the Israelite men dressed themselves in white robes and they rode into the city to sacrifice themselves as a martyr for what they believed in. So this idea of a white robe captures all of those pictures and tells us and shows us who Jesus is. I invite you now to think about some of the mountaintops experiences that you have had in your life and how through those experiences God has revealed to you who he is. So grab a piece of paper and, and a pen and think about the mountaintops experiences in your life, the times in your life perhaps where you've been, you've, been set apart from your regular day-to-day life? Was there some unusual beauty or goodness or experience that, that you have been through, this mountaintop? Reflect on your m- memories and try and write down some of these mountaintops experiences where God has expressed himself to you. This may take some time and I encourage you, if you need to, to pause the video as your memory works. It may take time to shift some of the ideas around until you, you, you discover some wonderful treasures in your memory about a mountaintop experience where God has revealed himself to you. I invite you now to reflect on your list. What does it teach? What do these memories teach about yourself? 
what do these mountaintop experiences teach you about God and how he relates to you? As I was meditating on this account of the transfiguration, the disciples coming up the mountain and they get to see a revelation of God and then they come down the mountain again. I was thinking about our regular Sunday worship and in some sense each Sunday is a little bit like this account of the transfiguration. Each Sunday we participate in a mini revelation of God to us. God reveals himself through his word and through bread and wine. As we come each Sunday, it's like we ascend to that mountaintop. We have that experience of God where we find out and and we experience who our king is. And our king is someone who is full of glory, but also who is a martyr, who is willing to give his life for ours. Jesus will die on the cross for your and for my sins. And as we gather together on this mountaintop, we also have a foretaste of the heavenly feast that is to come where we will dwell together with Jesus. So perhaps this Sunday, as you go to church, you can imagine that you are ascending a mountain. As you walk into the church, as you gather around God's word and around the bread that is Jesus' body and the wine that is Jesus' blood, you too are participating in a revelation of God, a mountaintop experience. We pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you have revealed your Son to us and that each week we too, in one sense, can climb up a mountain and we come and we see that you have revealed yourself to us through your word and through the bread and wine of Holy Communion where we encounter your son in all his glory, hidden though behind bread and wine. And Lord, we pray that as we descend each week from this mountain that you can send us out into your world to embody your gospel to everyone we meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.